Hello there, I'm Kiyosu Ronin Beatmaker, and welcome to Season 2 of the Monday Mindset. And on this episode, we're going to be talking about not giving up. We all have a passion, a goal, a dream that we are working hard towards. And at times, the road will be plagued with failures, mishaps, and missteps. And, you know, during those times, when our failures the mishaps, the troubles hit us hard, you begin to question yourself. You begin to tell yourself that you might as well quit. The sacrifices and setbacks and all the troubles are not worth the risk or worth the struggle. And, you know, I I used to kind of believe that back in the day. And um, I think, you know, Honestly, I can't even say that. That's me being a little too egotistical. But we, because we all struggle with that every single day, especially if you're a uh, creative person. Um, But I feel like um, we, especially nowadays, um, well, I, you know, I, I think especially during the culture that we live in now and the society that we live in, um, they don't really value um struggle they don't see the value in it they don't um comprehend it and you know i think when when we all get to that moment when we want to quit because all the sacrifices all the setbacks you know and we feel like it's not worth it anymore it's it's because it's not even it's not even the trouble, the sacrifices, or the setbacks. Um, I think, and this is something I'm just kind of realizing as I kind of process and think to myself that that's not really the problem. The problem is people who are, when we're feeling like that, any of us, including myself, when we feel like that, especially for me, when I feel like that, And I'm realizing right now as I'm talking to you that it has to do more with me than it has to do with any of the mistakes or the mishaps or the sacrifices. Um, I think it comes down to feeling, not even that it's that you're feeling that um, what you're really feeling is that it's not that you are not worth. You're not worth the struggle the the sacrifices, the setbacks, the mishaps, the mistakes, you're not worth it. You feel like the reason why these things are happening to you is mostly because you're the one who you're the one who feels that you aren't worth it, that you didn't earn it. Um and and you know there's well not even that you didn't earn it, it's just that you don't feel that you're worth the goal you don't feel that you're worth the dream and so by proxy all the mistakes and the mishaps you don't feel like you know what i'm not you know it's all no wonder these things are happening because i'm not worth doing this i'm not the right person you know i used to say that to myself when it came to wanting to be interested in doing music I used to tell myself that only certain types of people can do it. I wasn't one of those people. And, you know, when you. And that is another way of of. um, You know, self-sabotage, giving into the resistance. And I mean, even with setbacks, you can feel so discouraged and so disappointed in yourself. That you self-sabotage, that you sabotage even more towards that setback. Um, And it's, you know, it's not that you are reacting to how you feel about your yourself, your self worth in in relation to the goal or the dream that you're trying to receive. Because you may see other people around you, you know, or you may look there may be people you look up to, who went through, you know, the same hurdles that you're going through, 
you know, but they made it. They're on top. They succeeded in their goals and dreams, even if they're similar to yours or the exact same. But you might look at them and start thinking to yourself that there's something about them that I don't have. And, you know, it's it's ironic because then you probably you could interview them and ask them and they'll probably say the exact same thing. The only difference is they didn't listen to that voice. They didn't give in to what that voice represents. And that voice represents, you know, your own, your insecurities, your, the resistance, your fears. But you don't want to, you don't want to face them because you don't think that you're strong enough to do it. And I've been there. We I mean, hell, we deal with that every single day. What am I saying? We deal with that every single day. And, you know, it, it, and I guess the reason why I'm feeling a little, you know, tough and a little ego about it, ego driven about it and uppity, (laughs) um, is because of, um, an experience I had over the weekend, past weekend. You know, I had, um, if you've listened to um, episode 14 of um, season one of the Monday Mindset, um, you know, I, I delved deep into a personal um, tragedy that happened in my family. Um, and I spoke on a lot of couple, a lot of things in that episode. I highly recommend you check it out. Um, that actually kind of circle back to what I'm about to discuss. Um, so this weekend, I decided to go for a little hike. Um, I felt that given everything that I'm personally kind of going through and dealing with, I thought it would be a- appropriate for me to go for a hike. Um, so the, the first place I was going to go to um, I was like, yeah, you know what? I'm not going to go there. The weather's pretty decent today. There's going to be a lot of people there. So I decided to go to another spot that um, that I really, really dig. Um, and so I decided to go there. And um, so I just started. I brought my camera. If you don't know. Um, here's a little fun fact about the Ronin Beatmaker. I'm also a photographer. If you are interested in checking out my photography, I highly recommend you go onto Instagram and you type Ronin Images underscore 2019 or you head to Facebook and it is Ronin Images underscore 2019. Or if you would like to purchase any of my photography, you can head over to etsy.com dash, no, no, slash, etsy.com slash Ronin Images. Back to the show. <laughs> um, so I brought my camera with me, and uh, I'm walking, and I'm walking. You know, I was like, I was like, let me see if I can get some some decent photos of some of the leaves. You know, I mean, I missed the prime, the prime time for um, photographing leaves. So I decided, all right, well, you know, no biggie. Let's just see what we got. And um, apologize about that little noise. And so I kept on going, just walking, and, um, you know, started taking a couple photos here and there. I also decided to put my phone on airplane mode. Just didn't want anyone calling or texting me. And then, I don't know, like, 20 minutes, eh, yeah, like 20 minutes into the hike, <laughs> my camera's battery is dead, which is, um, which was so funny because I, um, before I left my apartment to, I checked the, the battery in my camera and it was dead. And I was like, all right, let me charge this one. Let me grab the spare, check that one. Said it had a full battery and, uh, apparently not. <laughs> So I was like, all right, no biggie. I got my my iPhone, and I was like, I can take photos on my iPhone. So no no problem. So I just kept on going for a walk. And um, I was just kind of thinking about everything that was 
been going on in my life and just trying to, um, I guess, understand what, how to move forward with everything. What, um, what am I experiencing? Um, how do I feel? I was feeling just very vulnerable, um, very lonely, um, you know, with the, the event that happened in my family, um, you can check out episode 15 of season, episode 14 of season one. Um, I was just feeling, um, like I didn't have any emotional control. I was emotionally unbalanced and I didn't know what was wrong with me. I didn't know what I was af afraid of. Um, so as I was going for the walk, you know, I'm just walking, you know, my mind was kind of here and there, but it was mostly, you know, what I was saying earlier, I was thinking about those things, but at times I would kind of just zone out and just listen to nature, um, listen to the quietness. But most of the time I was just in my head trying to quiet the mind, essentially. <laughs> and... um as I was walking, I got to a fork in the trail. And at that point, I was just kind of letting my instincts guide me to which direction to go. And so I'm looking to the right, I'm looking to the left, but I noticed that I kept on looking more towards the left side. Um, and there was something about that path that captivated me more than going down the right path um i guess it felt more and i literally remember what i was saying to myself it looked it i'm like man that feels unknown um and so i was like let me go towards the unknown um so i started walking and going down the path and then i'm like oh look a bridge Another bridge. I've walked over, I don't know, like three or four so far. And uh, I'm walking on the bridge, just looking around. And I was like, oh, okay, another another little fork. Which way to go? So I kept on, I went, kept on going left. I just, I kept on looking left. Um, I don't know why, but for some odd reason, the left just kept on captivating me. Um, man, I should have like looked that up to see if um, going left has any um, significant, you know, symbolism in it. <laughs> I'm into all that kind of stuff. Little fun fact. Um, so I'm walking down the left trail, walking, walking. And then I'm, I noticed something in a, in a tree stump. I'm like, what is that? So it's like a little a rock. And at first I started getting a little paranoid because I'm like, is this, some, is this some Blair Witch going on right now? I ain't got time for that. <laughs> I ain't got time for no Blair Witch. <laughs> and uh, I pull it out and I'm like, Harry Potter? And then I look and... Um, it's a, um, it's like, I forgot what it said. It's like, you found one of the rocks on the trails. And um, so I guess if you at the, it must be like their Twitter or Instagram. <clears throat> Excuse me. If you add it um, with a photo, I would assume, you know, you found one of their rocks. And I was like, oh, all right, that's cool. That's cute. Um, so I kept on going. So I'm walking and I'm. I'm starting to feel paranoid. I'm starting to feel scared. Um, because it's quiet, you know? It's really quiet. And as far as I know, I'm the only person around for miles. Um, and so I keep on walking. I get to another bridge and I'm like, do I, 
I, I hesitated because I was like, maybe I should stop here because I kept on fearing of the unknown. I'm like, I'm, I'm walking through the unknown, but I don't know. I'm like, I think I've gone far enough so far, right? Right. So I'm like, well, let, let's just keep going. So I keep going and I'm walking. And then I come up to what looked like a massacre. <laughs> it's the only way I could describe it. If you want to see photos of it, head over to my Instagram page, Ronin Images underscore 2019, or Facebook, Ronin Images underscore 2019. <laughs> Back to the show. So I'm looking at this aftermath of feathers and and pieces of wings and I'm like, oh, these are some good this is some good photos. So I started taking pictures of it, you know, getting really low angles of it and I'm like, oh this is crazy. Like, what was this? And I'm I started speculating, I'm like, this might have been a turkey. Um because we got flocks of turkeys in my area. They'll be all over the place. You'll see them hanging out in people's yards, you know, you know how turkeys are. So, I'm like, this is really cool. These are cool photos. I felt like uh, felt like I was um, a National Geographic photographer in the moment, you know? <laughs> so, I kept on walking. But then I stopped. Because I started hearing noises in the woods. And I couldn't see it. It almost it sounded like it was rather large. And, um, like, well, not rather large, but, like, I should say medium-sized. Um, medium-sized animal. Um, and so I'm thinking to myself, well, you know, we, we got, you know, we have bobcats in this area. Um, we have coyote. Is it coyotes? Not coyotes. No, yeah, we have coyotes. We also have coyotes. So I'm thinking, you know, what could it be? And I was getting nervous because... The path, the trees kind of linked together. And I couldn't, you know, I was at a corner, so I couldn't really see all the way. And and I'm just like, I'm listening, I'm scared. There's no sound. It's like a few birds and just that rustling sound and, and uh, you know, a few birds chirping. And I'm just, I'm standing there. And I just kind of, I kind of just let go and I just listen. I listen to the birds. I listen to the rustling of the sound and of the trees and the woods. And I'm just listening to the silence and the fear the fear that was just inside of me, it just, it slowly dissipated and evaporated. It, it, I, I felt this, I felt the fear that, that was grasping around my heart or around my soul, around my ability to move forward. And it just, in that moment of letting go and, and being with the nature, just embracing the moment, embracing the unknown, embracing the unknown. By embracing the unknown, I felt the fear just lift off of my shoulders. The, the fear of the event with my cousin, the fear of my relationship <laughs> with this girl I hold dear to my heart, the, the, the fear of my my goals and my dreams the the fear of whether i live or die i just i it just the unknown the fear of not knowing not having control i had no control in that moment no control anything could have happened in that moment and i allowed myself to embrace it to embrace the unknown and 
I wasn't afraid anymore. I wasn't afraid. I felt relieved. I felt clear. And I wasn't worried. I wasn't thinking about everything that I'm concerned about. All the emotional concerns, the emotional unknowns. I wasn't afraid anymore. And so I kept on walking. And I walked through the unknown. And I came out with an empty mind, with a clear heart, with no fear, pride, a sense of accomplishment, an improved strength in my, in my confidence, my charisma, because I'm not afraid of the unknown anymore. Because anytime I become afraid of that, I, I, I tap back into that moment. I take myself back to that moment of embracing the fear. And I feel at peace. And I feel confident. I feel happy. Despite what has happened, I feel happy. Because I know that I'm not afraid of the unknown anymore because I've always came out on top. No matter the situation, I always come out on top, standing tall, standing true and confident and self-assured because I handled myself correctly. I handled my responsibilities correctly. And even when I was so emotionally unbalanced and unsure, I maintained myself despite it. God damn it, I don't give myself enough credit. There are a lot of us out there, we do not give ourselves enough credit. In fact, if you're like me, you beat yourself up more than you ever give yourself credit. And it's frustrating and it, it pisses me off. Because I, 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 I don't even take in the, the, the medicine I put out. And it upsets me sometimes. It really does upset me that I don't. Because I, I know the truth. I know that I'm doing good. I know that I'm doing well. I'm, I'm improving on my faults, on my, on my mistakes. I'm working on the things I need to be better at. And because of this, because of this moment, I, I don't... I mean, hell, I went to bed early on time. I've been going to bed at reasonable times and not going to bed at three in the morning. I mean, I'm, I'm, I got back into doing my evening routine. I haven't done that in like eight months. But I'm, I have to work on doing my, my meditation before I go to bed. That's the one thing I'm still kind of messing up on. I'm struggling on, but I'm getting there. One, one, one step at a time. You can't give up. You really can't. Um, you know, I, I, there's been so many moments when I wanted to quit music. And for a time I did, I, I just kind of gave up. You know, there, there was a time I was in a really bad place. A really dark, dark, dark place. You know, I mean... <laughs> I'll, I'll even admit it. You know, I, I there were moments when I was a bit suicidal and and thinking about it and thinking about different ways. I was just in a really dark place in a toxic relationship, in a toxic job, working a third shift job, barely making enough to pay bills and barely any to eat. 
would only sleep two to three hours a day trying to work out and no, I wasn't even working out. And I was just sad and just lonely. I wasn't talking to my mom. We had a falling out and one morning I just one morning I just woke up and I realized like I I can't do this anymore. I can't live like this. And I started with meditation and I started reading different books. Um, one book in particular was a Joseph Campbell companion book. Um, let me grab it actually real quick. I'll make sure to do my best to edit out those noises. And uh, Reflections on the Art of Living, a Joseph Campbell Companion. And um, I pretty much started reading this book. I mean, I have so many things highlighted and, and um, with little sticky notes. And uh, I just I, I just I, I just needed this book, and you know, like when I mean by you know not giving up, like I I realized I needed to be better than I knew that I was worth more. I knew that I had a purpose, something to do. I didn't want to give up on it, on my music, on my, on my dreams. I gave up on myself. I didn't give up on my dreams, but I gave up on myself. And, you know, I kept on reading. And it was a, it was a, a I would call a journey of self-reflection a of as you know I'll, I'll read this quote as as Joseph Campbell has said it the line of self-discovery is meant to kill what dragon whose every scale reads thou shalt and you know if you really think about it in Christianity and what Joseph Campbell was kind of saying in this moment is thou shall, you know, thou shall not steal, thou shall not do this. And how many of those kind of moments do we say to us, you know, the lion of self-discovery is meant to kill that dragon whose every scale reads thou shall. And the dragon, in my interpretation, based on a book called Feeding the your demon, I feel that the dragon is your demon. I feel that the dragon is resistance. And when we feel like giving up on our, our goals and our dreams due to the missteps, the mistakes, the mishaps, the, the sacrifices, it's because of the dragon, the demons, the demon in our, in our soul, the resistance. Thou shall not Succeed in your goals. Thou shall not lose weight. Thou shall not go to bed early. Thou shall not be a more positive person. Thou shall not work on being better at communication. Thou shall not run 5K. Thou shall not commit to being in a relationship. Thou shall not take a chance on being in a relationship. Thou shall not work out consistently every day. Thou shall not play the piano every single, every single day. Thy, thy shall not, thy shall not embrace the unknown. And how many of us are dealing with that? Of giving up, of the fear. 
And if you're if you're thinking in that manner, you've already decided to quit. Myself included. You're putting yourself down and you're not holding yourself accountable. You know, and that's the the hardest part about not giving up is having to hold yourself accountable for why you're feeling this way, for why you want to give up. Because you don't believe in yourself. You don't believe in your self-worth. You're putting yourself down. You're doubting yourself. You're second-guessing yourself. You're overthinking You fall into that negative mindset, making excuses for yourself because life isn't going your way because of the mishaps, because the sacrifices that you make are coming in vain. They It didn't pan out because the results you were expecting are not happening fast enough, fast enough, are not happening in the way you want it. The people that you are trying to control or influence or be with, whatever it is. Whatever it is. And and we all there. We all get frustrated with that. Especially with our goals and dreams. You have to learn that it's you cannot you can you can't control the dream, but you can control how you succeed towards it. You know, we all made premature decisions on mistakes with our goals and our dreams and and we mess up and sometimes you have to start from scratch and start all over again but that isn't a valid reason to quit i myself recently you know have been finding myself stuck in that negative mindset of wanting to give up but you know it wasn't until i was listening to an interview with David Goggins, who said, at the end of suffering lies greatness. I'm going to repeat that again. At the end of suffering lies greatness. And that, I needed to hear that. Because how often do we Look at every mis- mistake, mistake, every mishap, every sacrifice. We look at it as suffering. We look at it as, oh, me, oh, great, this happens to me, of course, just my luck. You know, that classic saying, oh, just my luck. That victimhood mentality, that self-victimization, self-victimization, I don't even know if that's a word, but you feel me on that. And I realized that, you know what? And it circles back to something I always tell myself. Live life a lesson learned. At the end of suffering lies greatness. God damn. God damn. If that's not a, if that's not a quote for the ages. Live life a lesson learned. At the end of suffering lies greatness. So I, by embracing the unknown, I'm embracing the suffering of the unknown, the suffering of, of my mistakes, the suffering of my mishaps, the sacrifices, everything. At the end of it lies greatness. You become stronger than you were yesterday. Sometimes you become stronger than you were that day. In that moment. Because you embrace the sacrifices. You embrace the mistakes, the mishaps. You embrace it all because it makes you a stronger person. It makes that dream that much more of a reality. I'm realizing that myself right now. If it doesn't even work out, that's okay. But you got close, and that means something. That means that it's a reality. And I've had those very moments. 
and it's within that manifestation if you can, can if you believe in manifestation you will be surprised at what can happen you'll be surprised you know and i i looked within myself and the struggles i you know i'm currently dealing with and i realized that this pain these emotions they are a driving force because Every day, and I believe he said this, every day you wake up to suffer. And, and I feel that's, that's definitely true. Especially, you know, if you're a, uh, a really, really active person, you're, you're working out, you're constantly, you know, trying to be better. You know, that, they're suffering that no matter what it is. You know, it doesn't matter if you're working out. If you're going to school to get your doctorate, your associates, your master's. And you have to take hybrid classes and some on Zoom and some in the classroom. And you're just, it, that is hard. It's suffering. It's pain, painful. But you're driven. You want to succeed. And at the end of that pain, when you get your diploma, it was worth all of that. It made you even better. And then you realize, you know what? If I can handle all that suffering, nothing can stop me. Nothing can prevent me from being the person I want to be. You know, I, you know, I'm always about playing the long game. Especially when it comes to my goals and dreams. I take my time because I know that if you rush things, it never works out. Never does. And if it does, was it worth it? Was it worth the cost? I don't know. Probably not. And so I take my time. You have to take your time. You know, you're not going to be able, you know, when I started getting back into working out after that moment I had when I woke up that um, that moment, I was in February of 20, 2018. Um, so, you know, I... Um, you know, I started biking, and uh, it was hard. Um, but I kept on going every single day, thirty minutes. And you know, I get, I get like you know, me thirty minutes. I could do like two miles. I know, <laughs> that's crazy and embarrassing. But as time went on, and I kept on being persistent. Um, before the pandemic struck, I was biking, and I started this in 2018. By 2020, I was able to bike six miles in 30 minutes. And for me, I was like, damn, hell yeah, hell yeah. You know what? You know what? Let's go for 10, min 10 miles in 30 minutes. And that was my next goal. My next goal was to get to 10 miles in 30 minutes. And if that took me another three years, fine. And then in another three years, I was going to go for 15. Yeah. Yeah. But now the gym in my building is closed because of the pandemic. And it's frustrating because I'm like, there's only like four people that used it. And there's like, I don't know, maybe 100 people in this building. And of all those hundreds of people, 100 people, only four people used it, including myself. So I've been thinking about emailing. And being like, hey, listen, I will wear gloves. I will wear the mask. I will clean up. I only want to use the bike. That is it. So we shall see. But the reason why I brought that up is because I think the, you know, consistency. It was a consistent consistency every day of biking, every morning. Consistency can prevent you from not giving up. 
And you see, when I brought up the whole meditation and, and why, you know, I started meditating, it's because the consistency of meditation, because I wasn't giving up on meditating every single day, it made me more confident in expanding this routine to include other things. So as I was consistent with the meditation, I started working out because I felt confident in myself and I felt confident in the consistency that I was um, exhibiting. So I kept on going, kept on meditating and started working out. And then that that led from, from me doing adding more to my routine, adding more things, being consistent, being consistent. And, you know, the whole thing of what, what I'm trying to say is that consistency is an antidote to giving up. Consistency is an antidote to giving up. I'm going to write that down right now. Because I like that. Consistency is an antidote to giving up. So, you know, and that is, you know, I know that being consistent is hard. And that's why I started with meditation. And I know meditation is not for everyone. Um, but start, if you're struggling with consistency, start with something small. Um, and work your way up. And, you know, as you work through that suffering, you come out on the other side feeling stronger than ever, more confident. And you believe in yourself. You realize you can do it. That when you quit, you're not only quitting your hopes and dreams, you're quitting yourself. Because in the end, that's who you're really quitting. You're not quitting your hopes and dreams. You're quitting yourself. Because how many of us, how many of us, we talk and talk about what we're going to do, our goals and our dreams, but we're not even doing anything to make them a reality. Because we gave up on ourselves. And that happened to all of us. Happened to me for a time. For a long time. You know, the reality is that with every goal, with every dream, with every passion that you plan on succeeding in, committing to, learning, they all come with a cost. Sometimes more than one. But that's the reality of the world. <laughs> I mean, that's the reality. It's unfortunate. But that is the reality. But in the end, you have to be willing to bear those costs. You have to be determined. And you have to have the will. To overcome all challenges, future ones, current ones, hell, even the past. Sometimes the past will come back. Sometimes a mistake you made in the past or sometimes a mistake someone else made in the past and it comes back. But that is the circle of life. <laughs> and you have to believe and you have to hope that you can. You have to constantly reassure yourself. Uh, I'm going to end this off with a quote from um, the book called The Legends of Luke Skywalker. And in that book, Luke meets with a island tribe of force users. And um, he's trying to learn some of the ways of the force. 
from them. And um, they have a, a, um, a saying, a motto, um, and I think it's appropriate for this episode. And um, it goes like this. Happiness turns to sorrow. Sorrow is reborn as hope.